The average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere has been increasing slowly since the mid-20s, resulting in a warmer climate with each passing year. This climate change phenomenon comes along with catastrophic consequences in the form of extreme droughts, desertification, forest fires, intense rainfall and floods. This is a global problem, with Ghana being no exception. Climate is really changing in Ghana and uh, if you really look at the north where we are doing our projects now, our rainfall patterns has changed. Uh, Formerly, the rain in April, in May, you can get rains in the north. But currently, even in June, the rains have not started yet. And by October, the rains are gone. And if you look at Ghana, and particularly in the north, the rains remain the main uh, source of our agriculture. So if the rain pattern changes, then our culture is being affected. Our analysis has shown that temperatures are going to increase. Uh, on average by about 2 degrees Celsius at the near future reference to the, the current climate and then uh, by about 2.5 degrees Celsius for the far future um, relative to the current climate. Um, also that rainfall is going to be impacted and these have implication for the water resources that we have in the north, both the surface water and the groundwater. Northern Ghana is considered more vulnerable to the volatile weather patterns caused by climate change. Drought and overflooding in part of Northern Ghana has become a yearly occurrence and desertification is encroaching fast. Thus, climate change in Ghana, especially in the three northern regions, has become a threat to livelihoods. In an attempt to arrest and perhaps reverse this situation, the Government of Ghana and the United Nations Development Programme UNDP, have initiated a project titled Increased Resilience to Climate Change in Northern Ghana Through the Management of Water Resources and Diversification of Livelihoods, otherwise known as the Adaptation Fund Project. The Adaptation Fund Project is a project that is prepared with the support of the Adaptation Fund and being executed by UNDP and the government of Ghana to increase the resilience and the adaptive capacity of the various communities in the northern part of Ghana on the impact of climate change on water resources in those parts of the country. The project, which aims at addressing the impact of climate change in the three northern regions, has very enterprising objectives. The objectives are embedded in the aim of the project. First of all, the northern part of the country constitutes a considerable portion in terms of geographical size of this country. It has a lot of potentials in terms of natural resources and in terms of land resources that could be the best basket of the environmental resource for this country. But the impacts of climate change has made it that one part of the time of this country it has water scarcity. Another part of the year it has floods. So the adaptation plan is supposed to bring adjustments to the lifestyles and management of these resources to ensure that we maximize the resources of this area and control the impacts of climate change on the scarcity of water. In the northern part of Ghana, there are a lot of small reservoirs that are storing water for various uses. Now, with the increase in temperature, which means more evaporation, we cannot continue to store water in the same manner that we've been doing. Our reservoirs usually are shallow and they have very broad surface area which exposes them to a lot of evaporation. So we have to rethink really about how we store water for use in the northern part of the country. If you look at the rivers in their current situation, a lot of cetacean. Farmers, when they, 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 they farm, the rain remove all the salts into the river. So the, the river, which is a valley, is now almost full of salt, sand. So that is a major significant change that has come along the river basins. And because of this siltation, even during the rainy season, the rain that comes, very little is accumulated within the basin. The first thing is how can we solve the problem of scarcity of water in the communities where we are operating? So the objective is to identify first water bodies within those communities and see how we can restore 
the volumes of water in those water bodies by ensuring that we protect the vegetation around the water body. And then once we ensure that the volumes are okay, we make sure that the place is protected in a way that it will never be destroyed. And then also, we also help the community to be able to put the water that they are protecting into good use. And the project is being implemented by the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation with the UNDP as its multilateral implementing entity. UNDP involvement in this project is part of our joint collaboration and partnership with government, especially the Ministry of uh, Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation to respond to the government action plan on climate change as well as the implementation of the climate change strategy that has been put in place. The discussions around this project started somewhere in 2010 with the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovations to support the three northern regions in terms of building their capacities to adapt to climate change impacts. And we know climate change goes beyond an environmental issue, now it's a development issue and we wanted to build the capacity of the people to give them, support them in terms of life support to be able to adapt to the impact of climate change, especially on the water resource management around the area. Some of the major interventions over the four-year period include desilting 50 dams and dugouts, drilling of 100 boreholes, supporting rainwater harvesting, mechanizing high-yielding boreholes and dugouts for irrigation, creating buffer zones with fences, and establishing community nurseries for seedling production. The Adaptation Farm project is expected to directly benefit 60,000 people from 50 communities resident within 10 districts of the three northern regions. It is also estimated to benefit over 8 million Ghanaians living along the Volta River Basin, as well as increase income generation by 30% of households in the target communities. The Adaptation Farm project was successfully launched on 23rd of May 2016 in Tamale and various implementation committees were formed to oversee the implementation of the project activities. To ensure smooth implementation of the project, um, in the first year, we have, together with the communities, established structures that will ensure the management of the project in the absence of the project implementation team uh, from Accra. So establish um, regional adaptation committees, district adaptation committees, and community adaptation committees. These committees have various levels of responsibilities. We have water users among the committee. Unit committees are there, landlords are there, chiefs, reps of the chiefs are there. Even cattle uh, dealers are there because our cattle also use this water. So we have a very strong committee and everybody is interested and supporting this project. Some of the stakeholders throw some light on their various roles in the implementation of the projects. UNDP support can be categorized into two, broadly into two folds. Uh, first is the financial support and second is the technical support. Financial support in the sense that we provide quality assurance to the project implementation. We provide financial resources uh, and which we implement directly with government on the activities uh, that are lined up in the project. In the area of technical support, UNDP is present in 177 countries. And because of our network of expertise and knowledge, what we bring on board is the ability to finance good practices across the globe and to support the government of Ghana and for that matter, the Minister of Environment, Science and Technology to implement the project. So it is the kind of expect knowledge, the kind of skills that we bring on board, which is uh, more relevant uh, to the implementation of this project. Our involvement in Accra has been to support the review of proposals and the studies that have been conducted by the project. And then on the ground activities, we also provide inputs into review of proposals that have been submitted by the NGOs who have been engaged to facilitate the implementation of underground activities. When you come to the actual underground activities, we now hand over to the Department of Agriculture at the various districts to provide the needed technical support to ensure that the projects succeed. We coordinated that process of 
getting the communities like the we have the district um, district monitoring teams where these were the, those are the oversight committees that were formed initially and the community imprint was done initiated by EP I mean led by EPA in the region where we, uh, we went into the communities and we educated them or sensitized them on the essence of the project then we brought all of them on board but how do the people in the communities understand the adaptation fund project indeed you know when we have a river where there are no trees it dries up very fast and the once the dam is around with the buffer zone and with the intention of us planting more trees it will help uh, protect the dam from drying up the <laughs> More to the point, the trees they have come to plant, the trees will serve as a barrier for the soil not to come back to the water. The main intervention activities for the first year include the creation of buffer zones and the planting of trees along water bodies in the target communities. The silting would also be carried out on selected dams and dugouts. We are trying to restore the area where we need to desalt. We also desalt. So that during the rainy season, a lot of water will be accumulated within the project area. We will stay there. Joining hands to help community members in their times of need is a common attribute of the people in this part of Ghana. And it is this same communal spirit that saw people in the communities coming together to embrace the project and make it succeed. I would say thank God these are communities that are very, very, very susceptible to something that is very good to them. When they see that uh, this is a good project that is coming, they hold it with hands. Our community is well sensitized on the growing of trees. And then it went, when, when it even came to the land issue, it took us less than one hour to even acquire the land. Even there were crops on the farm, yet they agreed they uh, released the land. The target communities were provided with acacia seedlings for planting and materials to construct fences to protect seedlings from animal attack. Even though there are varying degrees of success with the tree planting, it is obvious that all the communities have put in a lot of effort to ensure the success of the assignment which to them is one sure way to help protect their dams and rivers and get them filled with abundant water throughout the year. The availability of water during the dry season ensures dry season gardening, which brings in extra income. There is also easy access to enough drinking water for the animals, as well as enough water for other water-dependent activities. As part of the project, the communities also benefited from boreholes, of which they are very appreciative for various reasons. The old ones, they dig for us. We are more than that one. Because of that, our pressure is... Uh, we are forcing the boat, the old one. Every time we have to 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 to, to use it, it's quite very easy. That it, one they, they they dig the new one for us. It's helping us a lot. So we buy no ababa boy. Pula no mu. We are in so no mu. And I say we 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 send so no crap for the coffee. I say we 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 go for the bi. So any bi. No we are in so no mu. We be press ah so na wa no mu so no. Anya sa. In the olden days that these uh, people were not uh, here, we were going through to the riverside to fetch. But these days we don't go there because of the support of the bulls. So we find it easy than the olden days. But we're getting enough more water. Anytime we need water, we go easily and we get it. You see, uh, without bowl water, we would have been uh, so sick. Uh, uh, as you say, my people, I know they will even forgive me because it, it, this place used to be a green, wind prone area. And to many others in the communities, 
Like this young mother of two, the proximity of the boreholes to their home is a blessing. With habitats widely scattered over vast areas of land, sometimes getting water from the only borehole, which might be hundreds of meters away from home, becomes one tedious chore to perform. We need more water. Here in the Abogam community, we have five sections, namely Pusepele, Vapo, Tangasie, Tungburipo, and uh, uh, you know, Pempelegan. And uh, they travel a lot of distance to fetch good drinking water from uh, Boho. We are a bit patient with us when we are like um, Oliver Twist. When, when, uh, the people are still go asking, they are asking, like uh, water you came and gave us. Already by what they said, I think they, you need another five or more. As with any human endeavor, there were a few challenges at the onset. The first challenge has to do with when the planting was actually done. We would have wished that this uh, planting was done at the beginning of the rainy season. So that would take advantage of the rains. By the time the rains will seed off, then the trees would have uh, established. But we planted and we didn't even have uh, good tree uh, rains afterwards. The seedlings that they brought, they were very, very tiny. We planted them, animals started uh, destroying them before they brought the materials for us to do the fencing. Sometimes, some feel that maybe something may be given to them before doing any other thing. But through, through my efforts, I normally bring them together to let them know that if you help yourself, then we can also get help from where it's coming from. Looking into the future, however, the communities have high hopes in the adaptation farm projects. I think that the potential is there. As you know, any project like that, it will take some time to build up. We do only one, one, one season farming here. This project showed us that it is possible for us to, to change this uh, way of life into uh, a double season. It's rolling out small, 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 small. All the communities will benefit from it. They have given water that is a warehouse. We have reached out to all these communities to serve them with the warehouse. That is a test that they have in faith that, yes, when the project is ruled out, there are so many benefits that they will all derive from the project. The project has been packaged uh, into various categories. So the other ones are yet to be implemented. Apart from that, what has been implemented, I would say that I mean, uh, it has been well done. After seeing the benefits of the project so far, the communities have vowed to do all they can to make it sustainable. What we want to do as an assembly is to own the project. We don't want it to be like one of those projects that people see to be government project, to be NGO project, to be some people's project. We want to own the project. That is why the assembly is deeply involved. That is why the community members are deeply involved. So after you have left, you should be able to at least maintain the facility. You should be able to take it and say, this is our property. It's just like this dam. Once the Baba Baba zone is up, we don't expect you to come and be uh, uh, cultivating uh, fire bells. It's our duty to do that. Like, uh, uh, we realized that uh, we are not happy when these uh, trees got bent. So we took it to ourselves and started watering them. We are foreseeing that some people are investing in trade, so we need to respect what the people are doing or we need to reciprocate to them so that whenever they come to this place, they also feel happy that the sort of investment that we were given to good people of Dampton, they welcome it by protecting it, by giving time to it, by protecting it against predators like animals, by taking good care of it. What we have planned that things should be sustained so that we can reap the benefit out of this, that is to be serious in the work, have unity, oneness in support of the work so that if these trees are doing well, then the supporters also or the donors will continue 
to support these communities for the better future. The takeoff of the project has been a success so far, and here the project coordinator highlights some livelihood intervention activities packaged for the target communities. We are going to implement a number of livelihood activities, and currently we've selected about 50 uh, non-governmental organizations, NGOs and civil society organizations that are going to implement these projects in a number of in the communities for us. We are going to have 34 communities and they take agro-processing uh, livelihood interventions. Uh, we have about 30 communities where we will do fish farming to make sure that they are able to uh, harvest fish and then make some income. Uh, we are also going to have about 35 communities that will undertake uh, beekeeping activities to be able to harvest honey. Um, we would establish some tree uh, nursery, uh, nurseries in a number of communities also, about 15 communities, just to ensure that they can continue to do carry out tree planting even after the end of the project. And at the end of the day, the major stakeholders have high expectations of the project. The northern part of this country where the project is being implemented has the potential to be the press basket of this country and has also the potential to facilitate the speedy development of this country. The challenge has been how to use water and water resources as a key to unlock these potentials. The bottom line is that we expect that in terms of sustainable development, we will be able to harness the potential of the, these northern regions be able to ensure the speedy development of the people for this development and also improvement on the quality of life of the people. At the end of the day, we would have seen and supported government to implement the policies, but more importantly, we would have touched the lives or transformed the lives of the communities in which we directly um, operate or implement this project. So we hope that they will be more resilient to climate change, uh, water and drought, but they will also have more sustainable livelihoods or alternative sources of income that they can use to support their families and keep themselves out of poverty.